Hello everyone, it's Alina. Welcome to my Soap General Hospital official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. In real life and on soaps, there's more to being a parent than mere biology. So while paternity testing confirmed that General Hospital's Curtis is Trina's father, it's also a reality that she and Taggart spent years believing that he her parent. So it's not unexpected that more than a few fans have been questioning why Taggart isn't on the canvas to help Trina deal with the purported loss of her beloved Spencer. Well, it's surely not because portrayer Rail Andrews is uninterested or unavailable. In an Instagram post, the actor, who has played Taggart on and off since 1996, talked directly to fans who've been asking about his absence. I appreciate your support, he added before adding it was up to you guys and God. Being well aware of exactly how big a role fans have when it comes to soaps, he encouraged them to reach out and make their wish to see him back known. You guys have a very loud voice, he pointed out. Especially in today's day and age. Certainly he's ready, eager, and able to return. In fact, one may say he's raring to go. If it's meant to be, I'll be back, he exclaimed. And if I'm back, I'll bring it. You know that's what I do. Fans have been almost begging the program to bring Taggart back for quite some time, but those pleas have been nearly deafening on social media especially since Spencer's death left Trina with a terrible ache within her heart. Taggart, too, has been finding things difficult since realizing that he was not the young woman's biological father. In fact, the last time we saw Marcus, he was doing a bit of day drinking by spiking his coffee with a little bit of booze. I want to see the struggle Taggart has gone through losing the biological tie to his baby girl, stated at Meng116 on Twitter. The drinking, the pain. Only to find out Selena switched the results. That's a highly popular perspective among viewers who feel that Selena may have tampered with the results as part of a wider scheme to manipulate Curtis. After all, she might simply threaten to divulge the truth, that Taggart won the daddy lottery, unless Curtis continued to do her bidding. Would the decent guy stay quiet or make the agonizing decision to tell Taggart and Trina the truth? One thing is certain. No matter which way this particular story plays out, fans are hopeful that Andrews will be on hand to play every beat of the drama. General Hospital just provided Mina the nicest distraction from her never-ending conflict with Carly and her deteriorating marriage to Sunny, a new target at which to hurl her rage. When Dan presented Nina with divorce papers, Sunny's attorney couldn't hide her snicker, not quite. You never liked me, Nina said. Ah, that's sorta like claiming that Carly isn't Nina's no one fan. No, hell no. Diane never liked Mina and has little respect for the Harris, who never had to work a day in her life. Unlike instance Sunny who is continually putting in overtime at his hard job of playing godfather. But Diane may have made a catastrophic mistake stopping to play with the future ex-Mrs. Corinthos. She may have put herself to the top of Nina's hit list. Nina, cunning as she is, might kill to birds with one stone by acquiring the goods on Dian. How hard could that be anyway? She spent the most of her career twisting the long arm of the law so that it doesn't smack her client, Port Charles Hello-clad Gotti. Then, Nina may convey to Sonny that maybe she'd reconsider sharing the intel that she's got if perhaps he considered giving them another try. Six months, she'd say. Six months, and if you still feel the same way at the end of it, I'll sign the divorce papers, leave Diane alone, and we'll be done with it. Of course, once Carly and Diane gain wind of the scam Nina has pulled, they'll move heaven and earth to ensure that Sonny's heart doesn't soften. Will they succeed? Or willing cohabiting with Nina once again remind him of the affection that he and Mike both share for her? First, the bad news. General Hospital viewers won't be seeing Emmy-winning daytime legend Michael E. Knight in Port Charles again anytime soon. And the good news? Thankfully, there actually is good news to offset the bad. The actor and alter ego Martin Gray will only be gone briefly, Soap Opera Digest says. The timing of the timeout makes sense, you have to admit. It was just last week that the shady attorney broke things off with darling Lucy Coe, who subsequently made hay with ex-lover Scotty Baldwin. Martin definitely needs some time to recuperate and realize the mistake of his ways. Knight, a native of Princeton, NJ, joined General Hospital in 2019 and was so well-received that his character was swiftly family-tied to the soap's longest-running heroine, 
Jenny Francis Laura Collins, but of course the enthusiastic reaction that the daytime MVP received was no surprise to us. The guy portrayed Tad the Cad Martin on All My Children from 1982 to 2013. He's not just beloved or an icon, he's an adored icon. In addition to ABC Soaps, Knight featured on The Young and the Restless as Simon Neville, in primetime on NCIS, Matlock, Law and & Order, SVU and more, and on the big screen as the leading male in Date with an Angel, which didn't turn out to be a heavenly experience for him. To be a soap star, or as I call it, an aging pop icon, is kind of a double-edged sword, especially if you love acting, remarked Michael E. Knight during a recent visit to Morris Bernard's State of Mind vlog. While daytime is a terrific gig, they shove you in a box for years and years, and the work is done on a budget at an incredible pace. What's more, the genre has for so long been the butt of the joke in showbiz. Knight understands. It's the easiest job in the world to make fun of, he conceded. How many times can you have amnesia or get your kids stolen by gypsies? And don't even get him started on the resurrections. During his extended tenure as Tad on All My Children, they brought Dixie back from the dead so many times, they didn't even explain it the last time, he recounted. Naturally, many an actor who makes it in daytime thinks that if only they got that big movie role, they could show the world what they're really capable of. Back when Knight was starting out in soaps, it was especially rare for daytime stars to land silver screen leads. An exception to the rule, he noted, was the casting of Karen Ling Gorney, who played Tad's sister Tara on All My Children, and went on to dance with John Travolta in Saturday Night Fever. Knight himself got such a break in 1987, when he was tapped to be the male lead opposite Fast Times at Ridgemont High star Feed Cates in Date with an Angel, which he described as splash with an angel instead of a mermaid. Unfortunately, it didn't wind up making him a household name. In reality, he understood early on that it probably wouldn't. It premiered in New York in two theaters, he remarked. I go in with my girlfriend at the time and a couple of family members. There were 16 individuals in the movie theater, and I knew half of them. At least Knight can joke about the way that date with an angel failed to take flight. If you're in this business long enough, humility is a destination, not an option, he remarked. After the release, the daytime MVP. Now Martin on General Hospital, as if you didn't know, spoke with his agent, who indicated that he had good news and bad news. Knight elected to receive the bad news first. The movie sucks, his agent told him, and the good? So few people had bought tickets to see it. Nobody knows you're in it. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please click like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.